Hi everybody, Paul here, and I'm here with Francine and our guest of honor, Quilbert the PT Porcupine, or Prehensile Tail Porcupine. And the reason that he's the guest of honor today is we're celebrating his birthday. We're actually a few days late, yeah. Um, his actual birthday is July 2nd, which coincidentally enough is World Porcupine Day, so it's perfect. Uh, but we wanted to also be able to celebrate with all of you guys through a Facebook Live. Um, so we're doing another celebration today. Um, so if you want to bring him over to the table, yep. Francine, and we can show him all the fun stuff that he's getting for his birthday. <laughs> so he's got some treats here. Um, a lot of these are things that we give him on occasion. They aren't ma the main part of his diet. Um, but just like with people, it's okay to have a treat sometimes. Um, Francine made some really fun little presents here um, that do have some little food items inside. Um, so I'm sure he's going to turn to those after he's done with destroying his number three here. <laughs> So as I mentioned, he is three this year. Um, when he was first born, he was very, very tiny. We have a really cute little picture of him as a little redhead. Um, so initially he didn't have, have those big quills there. He had some fur and he still does have that fur coat underneath all those quills, but very quickly um, his outer coat of quills outgrew that undercoat, that protective undercoat. Um, so you don't, see the, you don't see it anymore, but he does have um, some red fur under there. Um, he also was born with quills, but they were very soft, and they, they stiffened up within about the first 15 minutes of him being born. Uh, that picture was him with his mom, Lucia, and uh, unfortunately, Lucia didn't really know what to do when he was born. Um, so she hung out with him for a little bit, but um, he never nursed from her, and she, then she just kind of walked away. Um, so keepers had to step in, and we did hand rear him. Um, we took him home. Um, and it was, it was quite an ordeal because a little porcupine like that, they have to eat a lot. He, he had to eat every few hours, um, which meant that we were up in the middle of the night, in the morning, uh, in the evening, trying to get him to eat from a bottle. Um, and he, he ate really well, but he also liked to party. He was running all <laughs> over the place. Um, he wanted to play, he wanted to jump around. So um, it, was, it was very... It could be kind of stressful, but it was very rewarding at the same time. I don't know if Francine has anything to share about that. Yeah, no, that, so that, um, that gave us a really close bond with him because we did have to feed him so often. And um, he really looked to us just like he would, you know, a parent. And um, he's become one of our favorites. I hope you guys enjoy him as much as we do because <laughs> he has quite the personality. So like Paul was saying, you know, he really liked to to party even when he was a baby. <laughs> he is still very active. It's very fun to enrich him because he tears apart pretty much anything we give him. So that's always fun for us to watch. Yeah, and as I'd mentioned, he, you know, he, he loved to run around. He loved to play when he was little, but he was also covered in those really, really sharp quills. So I can show you here, and it might be hard to see. That is a baby quilver quill. So you can see it's much, much smaller than all these big quills he has right there. Um, and then in comparison, I also do have, oh, I stuck myself. <laughs> we, that happened quite a bit. Um, <laughs> I also do have a quill from our Cape porcupine, uh, Norman. So you can see that's way, way bigger. So there's a lot of, there's a few different species of porcupine. Let's see. Wait, where's that little one again? Right there. Oh my gosh. Not sticking out of my finger anymore. <laughs> Um, the really interesting thing about um, North American porcupine's quills is they are a little bit serrated at the end, so when you pull them out, it kind of hurts a little bit. Uh, we're very used to it. Again, you know, with a baby porcupine in the house, we're still finding quills in our homes. Because um, those quills are just like your hair. They fall out, uh, they regrow, um, and they fall out pretty easy. So they're all over the place, and they stick in <laughs> a lot of things, too. Yeah, he does fingers. still shed those quills, um, you know, just like any other mammal will. So we do have to be careful when we're cleaning up his room, um, just to watch out for those quills. Mm -hmm. But he he does a pretty good job of, of keeping himself clean. It's you know not like we have to comb through; it doesn't get tangled. <laughs> so that's that's pretty easy on that part. And um, we get we have a humidifier in his room so that he has um, nice skin. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he is a rainforest animal. You know, they're found in uh, the north northern part of Brazil. Um, and then into Venezuela, and I believe Colombia even. Um, so another name for these guys is actually the Brazilian porcupine. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I knew everything there was to know about Colbert. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's always more to learn about Colbert. Yes, he's, he's a fascinating animal. <laughs> um, 
as Francine said, you know, uh, because we hand reared him, we do um, have a bit more of a bond with him than we would with uh, a parent reared animal. Um, so he does love coming out. He loves spending time with his keepers. You know, to come out here, we just asked him to come out. Um, and if he didn't want to come out, he didn't have to. Um, but we, we hold out our hand and he climbs onto it if he wants to and he knows that means he's coming out and he, he knows that means he gets to visit um, new places, he gets fun treats, he gets to hang out with his favorite people. Um, he doesn't always get this level of treats. This is a, <laughs> this is a special birthday amount of treats. Um, usually we're a bit more reserved, um, but you know, we can splurge once, once a year. Um, and again, it's all diet items. The three is made out of um, a biscuit he would normally get that's made for animals that eat leaves. He does get some berries in his diet normally. And he does get popcorn and peanuts as enrichment as well in the, in the normal course of the year, too. So he's really tearing through that popcorn. I would have thought he would have gone for all the peanuts first. Um, he does like the peanuts a lot, too, yeah. and he did eat a couple of those. So. Yeah, and just like oh. people, um, you know, we have different tastes at different times, and sometimes he's in a peanut mood, and sometimes okay. he's in a popcorn mood. <laughs> and sometimes he just doesn't feel like eating anything we want to give him. <laughs> I'm, I'm always in a popcorn mood. So. Same. <laughs> Peanuts and popcorn is a good mix. Um, so he does like a lot of vegetables too. He likes green beans, carrots, sweet potato. The things he doesn't like is cucumber. Mm. So that's one of my jobs to make sure that nobody ever tries to give him cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> He's also not a huge fan of green pepper. Uh, he'll leave that to eat last. He will eat it eventually, but it's very low on the list. All right, so if people out there don't like uh, cucumbers and green beans, or not green beans, green peppers, because he loves green beans. Yes, he likes green beans. Um, you can just be like, oh, I'm just, I'm just eating like Quilberts. That's right. And it's, <laughs> and it's interesting because it, um, his father, who also lives here at the zoo, is pretty much the same way. He doesn't really like cucumbers and green pepper that much. Mm -hmm. uh, so Quilbert's a pretty good mix of his parents. Um, he kind of looks like both of them. He has some of the coloring of his mom, but I think his face structure looks more like his dad. And then his personality, I would say, is mostly like his dad, uh, but sometimes like his mom. <laughs> so his dad is very outgoing and curious and wants to know everything that's going on, and Quilbert is the exact same way. Has he ever been reunited with them? No. Um, these guys, they are solitary animals out in the wild once they're fully grown. Um, so once he's, a, he's an adult, he really wouldn't have any interest in, in hanging out with them. Mm -hmm. And compared to his parents uh, with, with their sizes, is he about their same size? He's smaller than his mom and bigger than his dad. Yeah. But he is full grown. He is. Okay. Okay. And, and can people see Quilbert when they visit? Well, he's not out on exhibit, but he is part of our animal ambassador program. So you might catch him. Um, giving talks uh, later on when we resume um, more of our ambassador chats throughout the zoo. Um, but other than that, you can see him on a lot of our Facebook lives because we know he's very popular with the people out there. <laughs> so he does pop out from time to time. And, and people yeah. always want to know this question, so I'm yeah, just gonna absolutely. I'm gonna ask it now. Is his nose soft? His nose is very soft. It is. <laughs> uh, we kind of relate it to being like a marshmallow where the outside is, you know, very soft, and then it's a little squishy, too. Oh. <laughs> I don't think he'd want you to squish his nose, though, right? No. So with that big nose, um, <laughs> his sense of smell is very strong. So one of the things that we like to do for enrichment for him is give him different scents to smell. He likes smelling other animals as well as things like spices. That's just something fun for him that we can give him. <laughs> Paul, Paul really wants Gilbert to open up his well, presents. Well, he's yeah. en enjoying his treats. Yeah, why go for the harder stuff when the easy stuff <laughs> right. is right there? Right. So, are his parents uh, animal ambassadors as well? They are, Lucia and Eddie. They are part of the program, um, and they do come out from time to time as well. So, you've uh, a chance of seeing one of the three um, again whenever we resume our normal chats. Um, uh, we're still kind of working that out. Um, with everything that's been going on, but mm -hmm. um, we still give them a lot of attention. They get a lot of um, enrichment, which Francine kind of mentioned before. Um, that's just kind of a fancy word of, you know, saying like things that uh, are new to their environment. So we change up their environment with either uh, toys or 
um, scents, uh, sounds, something different every single day, different diet items. Um, like right now he's very enriched with the diet items. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there certain scents that he likes more than others? Oh, that's a good question. I haven't that's noticed it. him liking any particular ones. Uh, I think he just likes the variety. Okay. So as long as we can change it up, he enjoys it. And we haven't been able to really get too close of a look at his teeth this time, but they're pretty unique. You want to talk about them? Yeah, so, I don't know, maybe I can... Yeah, I was going to say, uh, encourage gonna, him. Yeah, maybe I can encourage him, but he's really going to, to, to <laughs> town on the number three there. He's so happy. Um, so, the outer part of his teeth, they look kind of orange. Uh, and the reason for that is it's got a very, they have a very high iron content in the front of the teeth. Um, but the back of the teeth is normal, kind of uh, looks like the, our teeth. It's a little bit more white and a little bit more just enamel. Um, and because of that, you want to sit up? <laughs> uh, because no. of that, the front of their teeth wear down at a much slower rate as the back of their teeth, or than the back of their teeth, um, creating a nice, really sharp um, point to those teeth. Because uh, out in the wild, they'd be tearing the bark off of trees and they'd be slicing into plants with those teeth, so they need to keep them nice and sharp. Okay, so they're orange because of the iron. They're yes, not iron orange because he just ate a bunch of orange frosting. Yes, or, or or that he didn't brush his teeth or, or something. Yeah. <laughs> so we do we do try to you know keep his wanna... teeth um, nice and healthy and functioning. Yes. So we give him lots of browse, so different branches to chew on and leaves. We give him wooden items. Um, we do give him a mineral block too, so he can get all the minerals that he needs. So it kind of simulates the the. Um, bark that he would be chewing out mm -hmm. if, you know in a native habitat yeah okay and like francine said we do give him a lot of branches as well so he can rip that bark right off of the actual tree well that's great <laughs> oh my gosh that's almost he gone is, yeah <laughs> so paul was talking about his you know his care as a baby having to be fed multiple times a day we weighed him every day uh, now as an adult um, he usually gets fed twice a day Today he'll get, you know, three since he gets this special cake. <laughs> and we weigh him every other month to make sure that he's staying in a nice weight range. Um, we had someone asking if there are other porcupines that they can see here at the zoo. Um, do we have the Cape porcupines in Fragile Kingdom? Or I'm sorry, Desert Sedge? They may be over there. I know they, they used to. I'm not sure if they're still there. I haven't been to that side yeah. of the zoo in a bit. We haven't, we haven't been over there much with the pandemic. Um, but yeah, those are the guys that you can that. see by the by the meerkats, not the prehensile tail. Perfect. Yes, those, those porcupines are from Africa, whereas these guys are from South America. Um, and those guys are, are quite a bit larger, and they spend most of their time on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, Quilbert uh, would spend most of his time up in the trees. So he's a but, climbing porcupine. They, they do have the same color quills, though. Yes, so, yeah. yeah. That was um, one of the, the Cape Porcupine's quills that I showed right. you before. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. Now I'm... Oh, yeah. No. I, I, got all, I got all, like, <laughs> focused on that, and I forgot the other questions. Oh, what other animals come under the animal ambassador category? Oh, my gosh. We have, we have quite a few in the program at the moment. Um, we have a lot of birds of prey. We have some African servals. Um, we have Timo the sloth, we have um, some parrots, we have quite a few snakes, um, some tortoises, uh, and then, you know, uh, we, we consider most of the animals um, in the zoo are, are, are some level of, of ambassador for their species, um, because they are teaching you guys about their counterparts out in the wild. Uh -huh. Oh, someone says they live in northern Wisconsin. They see porcupines all the time. So what's what's the difference between quilbert and por porcupines here in North America? Well, the big difference is the tail. Um, these guys have that really long prehensile tail. Um, and that's, uh, prehensile is, uh, again, just a fancy word for meaning, meaning that uh, that tail can grab onto things. Um, so you can see at the end, there are no quills on that tail because quills are very slick and slippery. And if he tried to grab onto a branch with a tail that's covered in quills, he would slip right off. Uh, but since it is kind of naked, he is able to grip that branch really well, and potentially he can hang all of his weight off of there if he needs to, if he's trying to transfer from, from one branch to another. Um, generally, they don't hang from it. Um, they have really nice claws that are made for climbing as well, and they generally use those, and they just use 
uh, the tail is an extra support to make sure that they don't fall off when they're transferring between branches. Um, but yeah, they are different species than the ones that you would find up here. Um, they are a little bit related. Um, they're closer related than they are to the ones in Africa, um, but they are uh, a distinct species. Mm -hmm. And I also see, um, it's really actually, I think it's easy for people at home to see right now because of the tray. Um, he's got these really, really long whiskers. Yes, yeah, because normally these guys are nocturnal animals. Um, Quilbert, you know, does come out when, when we come in because he knows, you know, fun treats are going to follow. Um, <laughs> but as a nocturnal animal, if you're climbing around in the trees at night and his eyesight's not that great to begin with, it's going to be hard to find your way around. So those big old whis whiskers... Um, help him feel around in the trees. So he knows where the next branch is because he can kind of feel it with his whiskers. And you can even see towards the back, he's got some small quills here that act like whiskers as well. So he can feel around behind him too. So he can feel where he's going and where he's been. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Um, <laughs> with, without actually even having to see it. Hi. Are you, are you getting full, or did you just notice we're here? <laughs> yeah, he's he's been uh, very focused. On that. I can't believe that I can't believe he ate that entire number three. Oh my yeah. gosh! And again, that that number three is made out of just a, a soaked biscuit, um, so it is something that he would normally get, uh, just not in that format. Usually, it's a dry biscuit, like Francine mentioned. Um, we give him harder things to, to help wear his teeth down naturally. Yeah, so that's um, just his regular diet. That was his day, regular diet. Just, so even though he ate a getting, lot of it, yeah, he's just getting he in just one a, go. Yes. Okay. He, in a, and in a different form. Okay. Um, he is right. be very happy. <laughs> wow. Um, What's your favorite but, thing about Quilbert? Oh, I mean, his personality. Um, again, like Francine mentioned, he just he knows us. He he enjoys. He seems to enjoy uh, being around us, um, because he does voluntarily come over. We, you know, we always just ask him and <laughs> I know we're talking about you Hi. in front of you. He's like, wait, awkward. I just noticed the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just really, it's been really interesting to see him develop, um, over the course of his entire life because we got to see him from day one and how far he's come. And from this tiny little guy that we were a little bit worried about at the beginning, because again, his mom, um, didn't really know what to do. Um, and he's just this happy, healthy porcupine, three-year-old porcupine. Yeah. I don't know. What about you, Francine? <laughs> yeah, what's no, your I mean, that's thing? the same, his personality, just because I mentioned he is so outgoing and curious. Anything we give him, <laughs> he wants to explore it, you know, all the enrichment he uses. So that's a lot of fun to see. My favorite thing is his ears. <laughs> I'm not as I'm not as deep as you guys. <laughs> I love his little ears, how they're just kind of hidden back here. Yeah. And they do have tiny little quills in them too. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so cute. <laughs> That's so cute. I mean, he is adorable. I will give you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today and celebrating Quilbert's third birthday. Uh, please leave him your birthday wishes in the comments. I promise we'll show him every single one. Um, and again, thank you for your support of Brookfield Zoo. <laughs>